So let's look at some of these in more detail since we have time. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, this is some examples of the propagation of uncertainty that I wanted to go through. And so we have this one mil standard. This is a typical problem that you'll you'll have in in any analytical lab. Uh, you've got a, a one mil standard. Okay. So you, you bought this standard solution. It's a pretty decent standard. It's it's um, oh that's a good thing to point out. How do we read this piece right here? Right, one point zero zero parentheses one milligram per mil. What does that mean? Okay, this right here is telling you something about the standard deviation. Okay, and this is the place value that it goes. Okay, so this is telling you that the uncertainty in this measurement, uh, what do we want to call this? Um, um, we'll just call it the uncertainty in the standard. I'll call it standard. Now watch very carefully what I'm going to write here. I'm looking at that number and I'm looking at where the print C is and this uncertainty in this standard is 0 0.01. You see how I got that. Wherever that parenthesis is, the preceding place value is where that number goes. None of the other numbers are kept, okay, because it's just the uncertainty. So it's 0 0.01. That's how you read that. And so here's our here's here's what we write. This is the uncertainty, 0 0.01 milligrams per liter. Here's the relative standard deviation. It's 0 0.01 over 1, or 0 0.01 is the RSD. And this CV, do you, do you all remember what that stands for? That's the coefficient. Of variation. OK, so it's RSD times 100 percent. Or if the RSD is really, really small, you could do it in parts per million or something like that. But most of the time they're in percent. Okay. So then we use that to prepare a stock solution, a 1,000 part per billion stock solution. Uh, so this syringe was used to transfer 250 microliters, plus or minus 5%. So now the CV is given in the problem. This is like a nightmare problem because in one case, the uncertainty is reported one way. In the other case, the uncertainty is pre presented in percent, but you get this stuff all the time, okay? So 0.5% is the CV, 0.5. It's not, you know, don't. it's already in percent. So don't take that and make it 50%, right? It's 0.5%. So that's the CV. And the CV is equal to 100% times the RSD, okay? And so we need to figure out what the RSD is. So it's it's uh, rearranging. So this is the CV. So the RSD is equal to the CV divided by 100%. So this is our RSD, okay? And that RSD is equal to the uncertainty in that syringe divided by the amount in the syringe. So this is the 250 microliters. Okay. So that's the amount. The RSD is equal to the uncertainty divided by that amount. And so we're getting to the uncertainty here. We have 0 0.005, which is the RSD, 0 0.005, times 250 microliters. You see the algebra there? Just bring the 250 microliters up, multiply by 0 0.005, and we end up with 1.25 microliters. You know, it's really a pain for them to report that in 5.5%. <laughs> this is so much better, right? I went from this reporting area right to this uncertainty. I get this in percent, and I'm like, oh, man, I got I to, gotta, you know, get rid of the percent, and then I got to find the value, and then I got to find the uncertainty. Okay. But anyway, that's our... That's our sigma for the syringe. And then the volumetric. So this was this syringe value was put into a 250 mil volumetric. Again, another percentage uh, CV. So we do the same thing. Here's our CV. We divide by 100% to get the RSD. And then we multiply 
that RSD by the value 250 milliliters and we get our uncertainty. So sigma C is 0.075 milliliters. So now we have all of our uncertainties and our values and we can do the calculation. So here's our dilution calculation. Okay, so remember for dilution, M1, V1 equals M2, V2. Only we don't have to use molarities. We can use um, these other concentrations. So M2 is equal to V1 over V2 times M1. So this was our standard concentration. This was the syringe. And this is the volumetric. Right? We took a syringe of our standard, put it in a volumetric, and diluted to the mark. And we made a stock solution. Okay. So that ends up being <clears throat> 0.001 milligrams per milliliter. Okay. Which, if we want to do mass over mass, okay, we can use the density of water. That's a step that most people don't write down, okay? But we've got the density of water, one gram per mil. So now the volumes are gone, and we have milligrams over grams. I want to get rid of that milli, so I'm going to put three more zeros in here. So that's where these three zeros came from was the milli. So now we have gram over gram. So the grams cancel, and we can multiply that. I mean... Essentially, you could say percent, right? But percent isn't enough. We need to go to parts per billion. Notice when you convert something to percent, you multiply by 100%, right? Or 10 to the 2. And, and what does the percent mean? This percent means 1 over 100. So you see, I'm just multiplying by 1. Parts per billion, this piece right here, means 10 to the minus 9, okay? So I'm multiplying by 10 to the 9th parts per billion, 1 over 10 to the minus 9. I'm going to keep this little letter designation and, and multiply by 10 to the 9th. So I multiply this by 10 to the 9th. So it goes 3, 6, 9. So I get three more zeros. And so I have a 1,000 part per billion stock solution. And that's what I set out to make in the problem. So that's just my dilution problem. It's converting it from grams per milligrams per milliliter over to parts per billion. Uh, watch the video. If you're still confused, we can get together in office hours and we can go through that. What if I were to multiply it, uh, want to get to parts per million, what would I multiply by? It's easier than you think. What is million? 10 to the 6th, yeah. So a 10 to the 6th ppm. So this is, if I multiply this by 10 to the 6th, I would move the decimal place six places, and it would be a one part per million stock solution, or a thousand part per billion solution. The part per trillion, it would be a million part per trillion solution, but that gets confusing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's do the uncertainty analysis. This is all multiplication and division. So we have the RSD for A, the RSD for B, the RSD for C. I have three parts. I have a volume one, volume two, and an M1. And so here's my, um, my commercial standard, you know, the 0.01, uh, the concentration piece. I have the 125 over 250 for my syringe. Right? See, here's the 125 and 250. And here's the 75 and 250 for my volumetric flask. So that's the RSDs for each of these. You square them, add them, take the square root, times your value that you calculated from the, the actual mathematical equation, and we get 11.2 parts per billion. So that's the uncertainty in my stock solution. My stock solution is 1,000 parts per billion plus or minus 11. Now, I could also write that 1,000, and I could put the parentheses there, PPB. You see that? That 11 would replace the previous two places 
in terms of its uncertainty. So if I was given this, I could write the sigma is equal to 11 ppb. That's a great way to write uncertainties. Uh, like I said, a, a lot of times people will keep two. They don't ever keep three. Um, also, this tells you where to round. Okay, We didn't really have to round this one, but, but this tells you where to round. So it goes to the ones place, and so that's where we would round. Let's look at, um, let's see. Yeah, there's really nothing else in this one that we can play with. Questions on either one of these? Dilution is your friend in analytical chemistry, serial dilutions. This is the uncertainty associated with serial dilutions. Okay, now let's do the just the uncertainty of a burette, the volume delivered from a standard 50 mil burette. So every measurement requires two readings. So you fill the burette and you write down what the, the fill level is. I know a lot of times students will spend a lot of time trying to get it right at zero. It doesn't have to be zero because you're going to do a subtraction. You just, you just have to measure where it is. Okay. And so, but still, that even if you fill it to zero, you're doing a measurement. So um, each of those uncertainties is 0.05 mils. And so you can't say that the result is plus or minus 0.05 because you have two measurements. So how do we do that? Well, it's A minus B. So we have 0.05 squared plus 0.05 squared. Add them together, take the square root, we get 0.07 uncertainty for every measurement with the burette. Okay. Now the uncertainty in pH from a pH probe. <clears throat> so here we have a, a HCl solution, 0.1 molar, and uh, it's a really good a well-known solution in plus or minus 0 0.05, uh, 00, 005, sorry. We could have written this 0 0.100 with a 5 there. Everybody see that? It's just different ways to write it. Okay, so here's our, here's our calculation. pH is the minus log of the uh, acid concentration. This is a strong acid, so we don't have to do the ice table. We'll get to that in a few weeks. We're going to review all of equilibrium chemistry when we get to liquid-liquid separations. So you get another bite at that apple. Okay. So, you know, the minus log of 0.1 is going to be 1. Okay. And I'm going to keep all of these decimal places just for now to see where I need to round. We're going to let the uncertainty tell us where to round. So we'll write that down because that's important. Let, uh, I'll say let sigma tell us where to round. Okay, now let's do, we go, go to that equation sheet and we find the equation for the, the log base 10 measurements, one over the natural log of 10 and this ratio, the, the relative standard deviation. So the one over the log 10 is 0 0.434 and then we have 0 0.05 divided by 0.1. Put all those in your calculator and you get 0 0.022. So notice this tells us to round to that third decimal place. So we're going to come up here and we're going to round it right there. So the uncertainty in your result, the, the, the uncertainty tells you where to round your result. They have to match in terms of place value. So we're going to report this, the pH as 1.000 plus or minus 0 0.022. Or you could write 1.0 zero, zero, two, two in parentheses. pH is uh, unitless, and so there are no units on that. Uh, taking the ratio, the RSD, again, is 0.022 divided by one, so it's roughly, and multiply by 100%, you get a CV of 2%. Straightforward? Okay. Now let's look at the uncertainty in the concentration if we used our cheap pin type pH meter to, to read the pH. So here we have uh, 0 .0, 0.02 plus or minus 0.02 in our pH reading. Here's our calculation. The concentration is 10 to the minus pH. So 10 to the minus pH is, is 0.1 there. Okay. And then here's our equation from that sheet on the, the second slide. 0.1 times the natural log of 10 times the uncertainty. So the uncertainty goes straight into the equation here. 
It's not a ratio. We don't use the RSD. Okay. And so we end up with 0 0.0046, and that will tell us where to round. Okay. So we're going to keep all those four, four decimal places, plus or minus 0.46 molar. This has units, obviously. And so um, this is equal to 0 0.1000. We could put four six in the parentheses. Molar. We could take that forty six and divide it by a thousand, and we get four point six percent. So that's our uncertainty in terms of the coefficient of variation. Okay. And so that's an example of all of those different ones. And and, uh, and so I'm glad that we. Put the computer back up and, uh, and got this going because I think we did cover some interesting things for you, especially how to report those uncertainties. Okay, I, again, uh, you'll see on the homework some examples where uh, there's multiple choice where you know you've got the result and it's uncertainty and some one of them's right. What you're looking for is that they have the same place value, and you're also looking for that you're not keeping three digits of uncertainty. Two is the maximum. Okay, and the reason we keep two is is let's say instead of a plus or minus uh, 0 0.2, it was 0.28, right? You know it's really closer to three than it is two. Or if it's uh, plus or minus 0.21, you know it's really closer to two than it is to three. And so it's just comforting, if nothing else, to have two digits of uncertainty versus just one. Okay, so I see it a lot. Even in the NIST standards, if you go look at the standard value for Planck's constant, it'll have two digits of uncertainty there. So this is even the standards organization will keep two digits of uncertainty sometimes. So it's not just a DW thing. All right, y'all have a great day, a second time. <laughs> Thanks for staying, that, that's like a good testament to your uh, willingness to learn.